goodness with face, pat, and tiz. I felt like those were good subjects brought up to end the good and fuckery off with. To go I think right they were it. amazing topics. Um, <laughs> because my topic for this week is actually Donda versus CLB, a.k.a. Certified Lover Boy. Um, song for song, which was your favorite overall and why? What's your final thoughts on the album, your thoughts on the beef, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, man, let's get off into the shit, man. I got notes, y'all. I got <laughs> notes. I got notes. Um, so y'all know we did title. the Donda, right? You, yeah, y'all know we did the Donda breakdown uh, a couple weeks ago, and now um, I also have listened back to that again because I told y'all that night that it was kind of whack to me, but maybe I feel different after I listen to it in a different format and just kind of process it a little bit so i'm gonna give y'all my thoughts on don the second because we've already talked about don so i feel like i want to give certified little boy it's proper due as as well so um i'm gonna just start off kind of from near the beginning in the bible growing in love that song that yeah. shit is hard dirt and give on were excellent choices on that as far as just the with their vocal tone the, the their content the way they're structured their verse like it was just dope I, I really enjoyed that song and it's starting to become one of them songs that i i like it but starting to love it uh -huh. you, feel me? you feel me um fair trade it's okay i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna be honest um some of the beats are cool but travis scott is not somebody that i'm a huge fan of i like the people on some of his stuff but him himself. I'm over it. I feel like with Travis. I said it. I said it. Sue me. I, I listen. It, it, it almost seems like with Travis, it feels like he's like part of the instrumentation in the background when I listen to him. The yeah. Way, it's like he's just ad libbing. Yeah. And I'm tired of it. I don't want to hear yeah. it's lit. <laughs> I, I don't care. No, I'm good. Um, it's one of the things where I'm tired of him. So like the song falls victim to it at a lot. That was true. Okay. Um, TSU. Uh, I like this. I like this. Uh -huh. I like this. This is, where the, this is where the album college started feel, to pick huh? up for me. Yes. Album, this is the album started to pick up for me. Um, this is where Drake kind of hit that immediate, that mid range between singing and rapping, where he's kind of like just in his bag. It, it was just a perfect Drake song. The vibe was right. Beat was beat selection was a one on that one. Dope sample. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Then we get to N two D. When I heard that damn get throw sample. <laughs> Yeah, that was y'all know I'm a UGK guy. I'm definitely a Bun B guy. Um, definitely Pimp C guy. Love, love, love uh them. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, so I'm gonna be honest with y'all. The entire song, I've, I've listened to the song now three times, and I keep trying to pay attention to what the fuck is being said. I just hear that beat. The beat that Whoever made that beat, kudos to you, A1 production. I love that. So that was one of them where it got carried by the fact that I just love that original song so much. They had me as soon as I heard the sample. I was like, oh, yep. Uh, you got it. I say, I say kudos to any producer that can like make a classic song that was already great and make it something of their own or whatever. Because it's like, it's so many that like, do that and it just sound like the novelty sample pretty yes. much like you know what i'm saying so like turning into something new when you can turn it into something new that's awesome absolutely yeah. so absolutely. and he did that with that beat he definitely did that with that beat 
that beat is fucking amazing. <clears throat> um, I'm going to have more to say about the lyrics at some point, I'm sure. But for right now, the beat, the, the, yeah, you went, you went in too okay. deep is a, is, is a, is a hit. And, 40. and his flow pattern on it was hard. I like it. It was I like 40. It. I, all right. So I looked, up, okay. I looked it up. It was, Good job, 40. 40. Good job, 40. Alex Lustig. Kid, Masterpiece, Harley, Arsenal, and Noel. You know, it's a lot of um, people the in crew. the industry. You know what I'm saying? So it's probably the people you were vibing out with. <clears throat> and they were putting their you know, expertise in. Well, they did their damn thing. Yeah. Shout out <laughs> to the squad. The whole damn squad. Shout out to y'all because that shit is masterful. Um, Yelba's Heartbreak. From a technical aspect, this is probably the best song as far as like just musically. This is mm-hmm. probably the best song. <clears throat> but it didn't even have Drake on it. It's kind of like uh, on Dram's album where he had the, uh, I mean, not Dram's album, where Chance the Rapper had the, uh, the drum song mm-hmm. where he was like, you uh that was probably the best song on the album as far as music, just from a whole composition. But it had nothing to do with Chance. So, like, I don't know if that's, like, a new trend where you get, like, somebody to just come in and do something beautiful on your album just as, like, he's, a piece of art or what that is, but I like it. He, he said, he said, I mean, he said, he'd done that before. He'd done that on a couple of albums. I think he did it with um, the dude Sampa or Sampa. Or um, forgot his name, but he had a whole interlude to himself, or whatever, and it was just mostly him the whole time. So he's done that a couple of times, man. And then, I mean, there's other artists that done that. I mean, you know, okay. Jay Z did that for Memphis Bleak a couple of times. So, and you know, I, I like it. Um, and I like when they do it with these type of songs, where like it's a hip hop album, more you know, <clears throat> leaning toward that vibe. But then you slip this piece of art in there that's just like, oh, that's beautiful. So yeah, Yebba's Heartbreak, definitely probably the best song. Not my favorite, but definitely one of the best songs on there. Mm-hmm. Um, no friend in the industry. Hard as hell, got the three six samples, so it slaps. Um, yeah, Drake, like Drake was floating on that shit, um, talking his big shit. And yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of shit talking Drake. I'm not gonna lie. I don't care who's writing his rhymes at this point. At this point, I just like it. It's, it sounds great. That when Drake when when Drake raps, I love it. Yeah, you know, I I've been waiting for an all all rap Drake album, which I'm never gonna have for the longest. It would be you nice. Know what I'm saying? I mean, nice. if it was just little even if he gave EP. us an all rap uh, mixtape. He didn't call it an album. He just gave us like him rapping like the little, over like the little EPs that be he be having. That's a yes. uh, you know all of a side. But yes, but uh, I, no friends in the industry. You got a friend in this industry over here, champ. That shit was that was a one. Good shit. <laughs> Good shit. Um, my favorite song on the damn album. Oh, I know it. Knife talk. Ooh, <laughs> 21 Savage, Project Pat, Drizzy, man, that shit right there. That gang shit. Oh, man. That shit spoke to my soul. Like, that shit made me want to go all the way back to, like, 2003, 2004 and just go ride. I said it before. Everything is 3-6. That the music shit <laughs> was... Keep telling y'all. Fucking... Oh man, thank you telling, y'all. for putting that together. On the low. Knife Talk is definitely my favorite song on this album, hands down. Not even close to nothing else like this. As soon as Project Pet came, I was like, <gasps> Project Pet, huh? Oh! Mm-hmm. Man, oh. you can't do no better than 3 6, baby. I'm telling you. I want to bring up that 21 Savage is on the low, being a feature king, just like J. Cole. On the mm. low. Yeah, Savage. He's been on, hopping on. Savage went in on this one. Um, he definitely. Been hopping shy. on everything, and then none, none of his verses have been like a slack verse. They seem to. No, he seems to be 21 getting is better. rapping. 21 is rapping. Yeah, he's just getting he better and better. He rapping. And I respect it. Salute. Mm-hmm. It's a knife. 
And Knife Talk is my favorite song on our man down. Um, 7 a.m. on Bridal Path, the shots at Kanye and maybe Kendrick. Um, <clears throat> I love it. Definitely I a lot going on. Love it. I said I it earlier. Shit talking Drake. I'm a fan. Um, I <clears throat> like I like this heavy talk. Talk uh, no. the big things are going, you know. Uh, big, the, big the fire Drake, and condom here. The Drake that just happens to notice the time in the morning in a certain place. That Drake, he's he's always spicy, man. He's yeah. Always, whenever it's something a.m. somewhere, <clears throat> there's always like, some shit, bro. Like, Drake is not a morning person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, f- I feel like after midnight, Drake just starts to get crankier and crankier as it goes on, and the later it is in the and morning, another the, thing, the more angry his verses get. Like I feel like. It, it starts off really subliminal if it's like 2 a.m. Then it gets a little more angry and a little more perturbed, but it's still kind of under the surface if it's like 3, 4 a.m. Uh, you know this I'm nigga get to that 5 to 7 a.m. range, man. He airing shit out. He don't give a damn. He don't he done get, in, he get in his J. Prince bag. I don't tell you why, yo. He, by then, uh, champagne, champagne poppy, the champagne done kicked in. <laughs> done kicked in at that certain time of the night. And there ain't nothing left but champagne honesty. And yeah. uh, and he at that time of the night, that nigga that ran out of champagne, he drinking wine coolers. He he done moved on the smirn off ice. I'm about to vent. <laughs> I'm telling these shit. niggas what the fuck I gotta say. They gonna keep calling me light skin. I am, but you know. The next thing is gonna be like <laughs> it's gonna be like seven foot eight forty five. In Eiffel Towers or some Boy, sh- I'ma tell you, if this Negro get to 10 52, <clears throat> somebody gonna die. 9 a.m. in Dubai, that's <laughs> gonna be some crazy shit. <laughs> Drake, don't you, you know steal that? that. Or at least give what? or at least give Pat his writer's credit. I'm also a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a biter, I'm a writer for myself and others. And another thing. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> but 7 a.m. on Bridal Pad was definitely dope. Um, Race My Mind is a good dope track to groove to. Mm-hmm. Um, when I heard it, it made me want to just like either go stepping or just kind of slide with my lady, you know? Just wanted to grab yeah, the wife yeah. and just kind of like, yeah. Good background music. Yeah. Doom, 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 doom. You know, you just ride with your people. You know, it's a good vibe. It feel good in your soul. It's like a good plate of uh good plate of turkey and, and collard greens with some yams, and cornbread, and some mac and cheese and shit. You know, it's just hmm. Um couldn't get with the fountains vibe. Uh the music huh. musically from a technical <clears throat> aspect is actually good. I get the art of it. It just ain't my taste. That's really uh-huh. just all it was. I just was like, yeah, I'm good. It just wasn't hidden for me, but I get this it. This cup of tea ain't got enough sugar. Fine. This no, thing. that shit was real bitter. That shit was like when you <laughs> order wrong at uh, Chick-fil-A. Boy, that shit bitter as hell. It came out of nowhere because like the past few songs before that was just like, bam, bam, Bop. bam, bam, Bop. bam, bam, Bops. bam. Bops. Bops. <laughs> All this damn Indian shit. I, I, I just want ready for Bollywood. I won't read. No, he be he be going, you know, in the Afro beats. He's definitely that. very all over the place with it. I, I respect the <clears throat> diversity in his music, that particular vibe, and I like Afro beats in general. Mm-hmm. But that specific vibe just won't it for me. My my my, mm-hmm. my 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 ism couldn't ism with it. Um, get along better is dope as fuck. Definitely an inter- interesting perspective. Um. And there was a time in my life before I was married, before I knew my wife, you know, back in the college days, back in the ODU days, where I was in this situation where I definitely got along better with some of the friends of my girls than them at certain points where it would get a little weird in certain Uh times. So um, I get it. Um, So dope, interesting perspective and just a dope song. It was a real cool vibe. It wasn't like overwhelming or nothing, but it was good. Um, Uh You only live twice. Mm-hmm. This, it felt good to hear Rose floating on the track. It was a perfect beat for these three gentlemen. Um, 
Lil Wayne came in with a stellar verse. Like all three of these dudes just bodied this mm. beat. Lil and it Wayne's reminded verse. me of the early Young Money, Triple C, Khaled vibes when it was just all of them just getting together, just creating bangers, like this anthem type shit. And that's what it felt like. That was a really dope song. And I could see that being a single. Lil, Lil Wayne's verse is like my one of my favorite verses, if not my favorite verse. It, 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 it was a lot going on on this one, man. This is one of them, like, you're going to want to play it back and bang the man. Like, it was definitely just good to hear these three brothers just crush it. So, dope and, track. And, uh, all three went stupid on it. Um, off off yeah. topic, Lil Wayne also is another person that is, he's always been one, but he's back in the feature game or whatever, like. Yes. Yes, on the low. Like, I just he seen him. cut back up, and he's picking his features back up, and it's getting good. It's like on the low, you notice. Like, he was on a uh, West Side Gun, got a new track, got a new album out, and he's on the West Side, what is it, Bash Money. And he went off. And mm. it does not sound like a normal beat that you hear Lil Wayne on. So that's mm. why I'm like, I okay, respect that's Lil different. Wayne. Lil Wayne is an MC now. Lil Wayne is an MC now. Y'all got to give him his M- MC props. He's definitely, not, just, not just the simple fact that he's on a West Side Gun and that's an extra hippity hop hop type music or whatever. It's just the if simple If y'all didn't know, Pat loves West Side Gun. Yeah. I'm, well, I love Griselda. The Griselda is, it gives me that nostalgia feeling. You know what I'm saying? From back in the day, in the 90s and stuff like that. But like, just the simple fact that that's not the normal beat that you hear Wayne on and he crushed it. Yeah, you I know guess. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. as a, on some MC shit, like, just the the art of, like, being able to hop on any beat, that's some MC shit. And I think that is Wayne MC should shit. get his MC props. You know what I'm saying? For that. That's real. That's <clears> real. I can respect. Um... The last three songs on the album just kind of mm, like I am Y2. I like it. I like, I definitely think it was a good song. It slaps, but it ain't like something that I would write on the moment. It was just good. It wasn't great. It was good. Um, I felt like fucking fans was whiny to me. It just sounded really whiny. And it just like the, the vocal tone and stuff it just got on my nerves. Like halfway through the song, I was just like, ugh, shut up. Uh-huh. Um, and then uh, the remorse, the sample was fire, but lyrically it didn't move me nowhere. True. So uh, that's my take on song to song for uh, Certified Lover Boy. Um, uh-huh. And now I'm going to give you my song for song for Donda. After question. the read, after the double read list, question. Question. Ask. Your favorite rapper was up there, man. You didn't even bring him up. I did not. Jay Z's verse, "Love All." I feel you. I just wondered because mm-hmm. that's that's your guy, man. That's your guy. It wasn't. He. It was. It felt like it was one of his throwaways. He was just like, "I'm here." Just yeah, let this one lets just want to fulfill my obligation on this future. I got you. Just want to make sure you know, keep my name in the mix. But I don't no. know. Since uh, the song with him and Nas, I feel like this past couple of features have been kind of like, eh, cool, mm. but they're not his normal. Like, oh shit, I f- I feel like he's just keeping it all in the tuck. Yeah, I, I wonder is he on some shit now too, where like back in the day he would have body whoever he was with, or at least one for the head. I feel like now he's almost like elder statesman and shit. Like, I'm gonna give you the feature just to give you the look, but you know, make sure you still shine, up, young man. Like that type of vibe. And then uh, I think sometimes he just like, all right, I'm gonna take. I don't really rap that much now. I'm not really focused on the album. I want to take this time to say whatever the fuck I feel right now. Yes. Um, and, so Donda uh, initial reaction 
We hate. I just wanted. To, okay, I just ahead. wanted to say. Okay, I just wanted to say that when the beat changed on champagne poetry on the first part, I just liked that part. It just kind of went in on the on the first song or whatever. Yes, it changed up. I didn't even winning. mention champagne poetry. How did I leave that off? That's my fault, y'all. <clears throat> that song was immaculate. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful damn song. Like, well written musically, like the arrangements, like that. just everything was very well put together on that. So that was definitely a good way to just kind of kick off the album and let you know, like sonically, you were about to get some good shit coming. Yeah, yeah, I love intros, man. Intros set you up right. <sighs> Which brings me back to Donda. Now, we, we, if you've seen our review of the album already, then you already know how we felt about it on the initial list. And then that was my first time listening, period. So, yeah. I've listened to it a few more times in different formats. Um, my opinion has changed a little bit. But I'm going to just go song for song. The Dawn the Chant was lame and stupid. It's fucking stupid. Um, I think that's a dumbest, consensus. It's the dumbest intro I've ever heard in my life. Um, it's stupid. I think. I don't my know why he did the same it. thing. I don't know why he did it. Um, it was so many other things he could have did that it was stupid. <clears throat> um, it was a waste of his mother's name. It was stupid. It was stupid. It was stupid. I'm gonna just call it what it was. It was lame. And now the rest of the album. Jail Part One. Loved it. Um, jail. Okay. So I'm going to get to the, the part two, but in general, jail is my favorite song right now. Period. Mm. In any genre of any music of any that album. So I'm going to just get that out the way right now and just say it. I, I kind of called it that night mm-hmm. um, on the live, but I've definitely made it a card confirmation. It has definitely become my go-to song right now. Like I love that fucking song. It is amazing. It, you know I'm big on stadium songs. I love songs that like feel like you in the crowd. Like, guess who's going to going to I, take it. Yeah, I like that old rock vibe where you just selling out a crowd and, and that Jimi Hendrix playing the national anthem. Like, that shit that just like, you get goosebumps mm-hmm. when you're yeah. in the crowd and everybody's chanting. You know what I mean? So I could feel that being one of those and I, I think that's why it's my favorite song. It's I'm biased to stadium music. Um, my favorite song by 702 was I Still Love You for the real reason. It just sound, it has a just, stadium yeah, sound. A I like big stadium sounding songs. So I'm going to just put that out there. Jail is my favorite song, period, right now. Um, now I'm going to say this. I like Jay-Z's verse on it. It was dope. Jail is my favorite song right now. I'm going to get back to jail when I get to jail part two and bring it all the way home and bring it full circle at that point. Mm-hmm. God breathed was too off kilter for me. The beat went hard. Mm-hmm. It was just sonically for me, I couldn't get through maybe the first 30, 40 seconds. And then my brain was just like, it's too much. I can't. I don't know whether it was his tone of voice or the cadence or what was going on, but it just was it was just like jarring to me <laughs> sonically. And I just didn't like it. This I, I would say on God Breathe, I was like, what got me was the hook. I was like, you know what? This is some credit. That's a crazy concept to think about. It's some crazy I mean, shit. I feel like Cra- God, that's some crazy that's some strong... is what crazy is what was going on mm-hmm. as I listen. Yeah. Yeah. This was strong. This is a strong statement to say. And I like I like being I like when raps are bold like that. But if you call this rap, but the beat did go hard and it went along with that that statement. So I was like, oh. Right on. I can respect but, but at the same time, I was like, all right, nobody else is saying nothing up here. I'm going to either end up freestyling on this, but it feels too weird to freestyle on, or I'm going to skip this. Yeah, it was just, it, it, I wasn't ready. I didn't, yeah. Off uh-huh. the grid was uh, corny to me. I, 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 
eh, is what it is. It's the hook. It's the chorus. It was corny to me. It was really corny to me. Um, the beat slap, as always. You know, Kanye is mm-hmm. an amazing producer. The beat was hard. Just was corny. That was the overall vibe I left the song with at the end of it. I just was like, oh, that was corny. So, yeah, and you know, they could have definitely, they could have definitely left the second person off off the grid because I don't know what the fuck he was saying the whole. Yes. Time. Now, going into this conversation, I'm going to remind everybody, too, out there. With 30. Donda had 27 songs. No, yeah, 27. 27. 35 Loverboy only had 21, if I'm not mistaken. Am I counting that correct? And technically, one, two, three, four. Technically, some of those songs 20, are like 23. Repeats. Yeah, it's repeats. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, But that matters, though, because I'm going to get to that in a minute, too, as I get uh-huh. to the second part. But that does matter. Ooh, that matters. Um, Hurricane was the victim to me being sick of the weekend. So as soon as the weekend started singing, the first time I didn't like it, and the next two times I listened to this album, still don't like it. Has <clears throat> nothing to do with Kanye. Didn't even care about what Kanye had to say. Weekend started singing. I stopped listening. I am sick and fucking tired of the weekend. I don't want to hear his voice no more for a long while. I'm good on him. <laughs> he, he was a good novelty when he first dropped. Now nah, I'm just over it. Yeah. That's personal. That has nothing to do with nothing. I'm not saying he's whack or nothing. It's just I'm tired of it. I don't want to hear him no more. You yeah. put him on your song, you can kind of lose me as soon as I hear him come in. <laughs> nope. Oh, real. Yep. Don't like it. Some artists, you you know, Sorry, you just get tired of listening. Sometimes. So hurricane you, they oversaturate. Um, praise God, I kind of like. The weird voice kind of made me like it, and then the bop with the choir is just my kind of vibe in music, period. You put a choir in there and the bop, you kind of got me so sonically, so all you got to do is halfway rap on there, and I, I like it. So, I like that it. That song, I like that it. song, that's the song, who was on there? Oh, Baby King. Yes. From, um, he's up there. He, yes. Yeah. Like I said, um, I'm, it's a good I'm song. rolling with him. Good song. <laughs> um, Jonah was just good all around to me. I don't have any like special notes for that song. It was one of those songs that was just like, just a good song. I don't have uh-huh. like no amazing thing to point out or no special highlight for it. It's just a good song. Good song. Good song. Okay. 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 Okay, okay, it's fine. The beat and the overall song, the flow switches, it, it's like a whole experience. I like mm-hmm. the hook. Okay, okay, I'm not okay. That may be my mantra right now in life. Um, so I really rock with it. Um, I'm going to yeah, get to the second version of that at the end. I, I fucks with the okay, okay, the first version. I, I fucks with it. Um, I'm gonna talk about the but, second. Don't talk about the second version yet, please. I'm not. I'm not because I haven't. Okay. Tell you the truth, I haven't really even listened to the second version because I haven't gotten like I've heard it, but I haven't even gotten to it for real, for real. Because we get off, just do yourself a favor. I, I'm. I am. Uh, the all right. So the thing, the overall thing with Donda for me is that it's like after a while, the shock and ga- gas factor that I was rolling with on it, it kind of just dies out at the end. It's like I get what I get out of it. I like it. And then I just get tired of listening to it and I skip to the next track. That's okay. what that's what it's been feeling like to me. I can understand that. Um mm. yeah. I got a mm-hmm. question at the end of this. So I'm going to let mm-hmm. you expand upon that a lot. A lot. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah I, I just want to just say that part first and then go about it. That's real, though. I, I understand yeah. what, what, what you're saying, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, the Junior song is funny to me. <laughs> junior, what the not be? I don't know what the hell none of that means. I don't know who that person is. But Junior, that song, I like it. It's funny, so it, I it, like it. It's one of it them rocks. songs that, like, he ain't talking about shit, but I like it. 
Hey, Rob, I, like I just it. don't know what he's saying. And I'm wondering if he said something and he just reversed it. Because it sounds like he's saying something in reverse. I don't but, know what um, the hell he's talking about. But I like it. It's one of them weird songs. It's just like, I don't know. I couldn't even tell you why I like it other than it's funny. It made me I laugh. Can't tell you what it and I enjoyed it. Like, it was enjoyable. I don't know what he's saying. Like, like, like it you. rock. He got a um, box. Believe what I say has the hard sample. Um, when you when you need a good song for drunk nights, when you just like uh, vibing out with your girl and your friends, and y'all just kind of chilling, and you having a, a like kickback or something, you need some good ambiance. This is a good mm-hmm. song to throw off. Um, dope. The sample is fucking yo. Between mm-hmm. these two albums, the sample games these producers was putting them on. Like the samples were fucking crazy. They they they've been treating this like this is Michael Jackson and Prince. So boy, it, yeah, that, that production was stupid. Um, twenty four is dope as fuck. The great gospel vibe. So you know I love gospel. That's kind of my main go to these days. The uh, Sunday service choir has been giving me my rise to work. Uh, pretty much on constant rotation for the past two months. So um. Yeah, I was all about 24. The, the whole vibe of it was right. The, the gospel vibe was right. I'm definitely all about praising the Lord. And it was just a dope song to me. I, I really enjoyed that song. I really enjoyed that song. Like, it was mm-hmm. a very good spiritual vibe. I felt like, yeah. Bouncy. I felt blessed at the end of that. Um, remote control is dumb. That's all I had here on my notes. Remote control is dumb. I like the beat on it, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. It sounds like a throwaway song, but I like the beat on it. Yeah, he could have done something else. Um, Moon is different, but it's a great musical experience. experience. The guitar chords and the falsetto harmony were just really a good combination together. Um, It was just really like beautifully arranged, like the choice of wording like it was just a beautiful song like that's one of them songs that's just like where kanye show up showing off his production skills as like a producer not a beat maker and he's like putting the right arrangement together the right chord now together oh this perfect instrument would go perfect with this vocal tone right here and this key like it was just a beautiful experience so moon is definitely that's the one with um that's the one with kid cuddy up there right I believe so. Yes. Hence the name Moon. Because he's the Moon Man guy. So yes. yeah. That's um, it, you know. Heaven is hell. Heaven and hell is cool at the beginning. But that yay scatting at the end can go. Yeah, I, it just went out like when nowhere. he started getting into that weirdo shit, I'm not ready for it. I'm not there yet personally, progressive. I'm not progressed to that level yet. So I'm good. He can keep that oh. second. The second half of the song he can have, the first half I liked. Um, mm-hmm. Donda reminded me of my granny, so I resonated with the emotion he was going for. So that song, like, it was definitely, like, I, I felt his love for his mother. Mm-hmm. I, I felt that connection to, like, your lost loved one. So it definitely took me to a, an emotional place of like longing and like thinking about my loved ones and kind of just having that moment. So that one, I, I really like that one. I, I think whatever the emotion that he was trying to invoke, he, he got it with that one. He, he, sure. he nailed it. Um, and just a dope little dedication to his mother. I respected it. Um, keep my spirit alive, go extra hard. That's all I had for it. So <clears throat> Go, go extra hard. That song, go. Go, go, go. I rock with that shit. Um, yeah, I like that one, too. I that shit that is one. hard. Um, yeah. And then Jesus Lord reminded me of the old Ye. It felt like he kind of went back to, like, uh, his old ways for a second. The Jesus content, the, the beat, um, just the whole thing. The features were epic. Did not see Jay Electron coming out of nowhere out of a uh, 30-year hiatus. If it's if it 
he damn sure ain't low, see that coming on the low he been you know dropping on different people's stuff too that's on the low he came in with real some, on with some j electron back in his bag and then the locks picked straight the fuck back up from where they left off from versus uh-huh. like damn all three of them niggas just went the hell off um, yeah yep. you like rapping you like the old yay? You want to feel like you're back at like the late registration college dropout days? This was the song for you. Jesus Lord was that. It was really that nostalgic yay. Yeah. What a lot of people started liking yay for in the first place. It was dope. I like that. Though. And they definitely just came right off the plane from the verses and put that verse. I down mean, just I heard. Hey, good day. Gotcha. And crush that shit. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Veterans. Locks, veterans. Locks still winning out here, man. They still winning. Straight fire. Um, you know who I think going to win on the Fat Joe versus um, Ja Rule? Jadakiss. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if at the end of everything, he's standing on the stage, dropping the mic, standing with his arms out like they play that, the um, king again. They play that 101, 100 clips thing. He'd be right there in the middle. But yeah, yes. back to Donda. Um, new again, I only like the choir parts. I could care less about the rest of the song, like literally the rest of the song. Everything but the song. They could have went acapella and just gave me the choir parts. I would have rocked with that. And that's probably why Chris Brown is mad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell the vision is cool, but it gets redundant fast. Um, that was just, actually just on... Kind of repetitive. That, that was on Pop Smoke kind of album. That was yeah. the drill song, right? That was yeah. on, actually on Pop Smoke album, and then I guess he just put it up here because EGA. Yeah. The song is actually won. hard. It's just that beat, like the they, they didn't they looped it without any bridge, any anything. It's just that, so it was just kind of mm-hmm. like redundant. Um, Lord, I need you is just a beautiful song to me. Like, yeah, it's real. Yeah, if you if you ain't heard the Donda album, like I ain't trying to spoil it for y'all, but. Listen to that. You song. can't spoil it, that man. Song. It's not like we like it's not like I can beatbox Kanye's production. So no, this is true. But it's a beautiful <laughs> song. It's a beautiful song. Please go listen to it. Um Poor Souls is my shit. And Roddy Rich's verse reminds me of how far I came. Um this song had me really thinking about just like success and just not success necessarily even from a monetary stance, but from a growth standpoint of just like growing out of certain mentalities and growing into uh, more successful ones. Just like, it was a very uplifting song and I liked it. It was very like, mm. I felt inspired after the, after that one. Um, and I just love Roddy Rich, man. I think he's fucking underrated right now as far as just make it. Like, I haven't heard him on anything and he was whack. Everything he touches is just beautiful. I love his flow. Yeah. I love I love his his uh the way he floats and makes melodies out of all of his shit. Like it's just dope. Um, so yeah, pure souls. Um, come to life is pretty good. The piano is extra dope. I don't know who the hell that is on keys, but they are fucking amazing. They own like Alicia Keys uh type level to me. Like they're just beautiful. Like those keys mm. are beautiful. Um. I wish he would have done more with No Child Left Behind because the organ is so crazy and the hook was fire uh-huh. as hell. So I'm just not sure what happened with that or whether it was just meant to be like that, but... I think a lot of this stuff was unfinished. Just, no Child Left Behind just feels... That's exactly. No Child Left Behind just feels unfinished. And then we get into the what I call the appendix songs, which are like the remixes of the originals. Oh, um, yeah. Jail 2 is my actual favorite song. The baby verse on there is. It's the baby, man. It's the baby. Bruh. The baby was a grown was... man on that verse. That verse right there was fire as hell to me. To me, you hear me. When I tell you, like, it ain't many times I'm going to compare verses with Jay-Z and say somebody else had the better verse, but the baby witness, 
That shit was hard. I just and, wish they put the song together all at once. And the way he made it relevant, though, to like, he's talking about one thing, but he makes it feel like he's talking about a woman. Uh-huh. I'm going to let people out there hear the song and figure out what he's talking about. And people who know, know, but I love that. I love when people do that. And they do it where they, where they actually mask it. Like, people would actually hear that song, and a lot of people might not catch some of the little intricacies that tell that give it away. You feel me? Yeah. That shit was dope. That shit was and that's dope. That's what you call lyricism. Song. Yes. The baby is... People don't give him credit for being a, a good rapper. Like, past all the controversy, to me, the baby is just a good rapper. Like, I don't know. That's my opinion. But At the end of the day, that's the first thing I listen to. He fired. Can you rap? Can you rap? And he can rap. He can fucking rap his ass off. Um, what was the uh, next part two? The next part two was okay, okay, part two. That shit is hot fire upon the head. Me listen now. What I tell you. Oh, I wanted to just. Put lighter to an aerosol can, go to a club, and live out the belly, uh, the belly scene with Lennox. Like that shit, when that shit come in, oh my God. Yeah, I'm listening to that. Oh. Yo, okay, okay, part two is hot bitch. fire upon them head. And that shit may come. That shit may be pushing that jail like for one A one B status type shit. Um, that shit is hard. The features are hard. The whole that that shit okay, just okay. goes so hard. Um, yes, yes, uh, definitely a great remix. That that, that one right there is if it's jail two. Okay, okay, two is like pushing. Junior part two. Um, it's a bit more serious this time in the second half. Um, I feel like the feature adds, grounds it a little bit more and takes it a little bit more out of the funny realm to me. Um, they give it a little bit more of like, okay, now I'm with it. I understand a little bit more. So uh, definitely like that. Um, what was the other part too? Jesus Lord. Jesus Lord. Okay, so Jesus Lord won. That was it was. It was just the old yay. Jesus Lord Part 2 is the one with Jay Electronica and the locks. Where mm-hmm. it, it's just, yeah. So Jesus Lord Part 2 is fucking crazy. Jesus Lord Part 1 was already banging. Jesus Lord Part 2, that shit, he took it over the top with that. Um, and I think that's all the Part 2s. So um, song for song, album for album. Who you got, Pat? Donda, CLB, and Y. See, this is the thing. It's all about vibes with me. Whatever. I feel like production-wise and musically, it's Donda. Because Drake was real safe on his album. He didn't go outside his normal formula, pretty much. But... At the end of the day, I think Kendrick album is the best album that's coming out. <laughs> Hell no. Um, I can't right, argue. Let me, let me make right. this all make sense for y'all right now. Okay. Because yeah. let me make it make it all make sense or whatever. I, I really love Rapidy Rap. You get what I'm saying? I really love Rapidy Rap. That's my first go to, pretty much. And then everything else around it. Don't get me wrong. I listen to all kinds of music. i am still got PTSD when it comes to country, but I listen to all kinds of music. Production-wise, when you're looking, when you're listening to music for sounds and you want to hear something new musically, Donda. I feel like it's Donda. If you want something for everyday use, to get you through the everyday thing. You're not trying to think too much, but you want to be entertained intellectually. CLB. 
you you know, for your everyday, I want to post something on Instagram for your everyday, you know, I just want to bounce for that time that you, I, I don't want to think too much. I just want to enjoy the day, CLB. When you at home and you just vibing out or, you know what I'm saying, you just want to go to a whole nother level or you're in concert mode, Donda, pretty much. The flaws on both these albums, for me, is I like rap. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like, I like rap. I like rapidly rap. Not all the time, but I like rap. The only time, I'm going to listen to all of these, and then whenever they sing or whatever, I'm going to be like, they could have took this singing part out and put a rapper in. Somebody could have killed this shit. Now, there's some songs I'll be like, you can't just put a... There's some songs you just don't put a rapper in. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying put a rapper on Yepa's mm -hmm. Heartbreak. No, I'm not saying Right. That. And whatever. Just like rap. You know what I'm saying? But for right now, you know what I'm saying? I, every day... For, because I'm a rabbity rap person every day, I'm probably going to listen to CLB more or whatever, but I'm probably going to appreciate the artistry of Donda with a lot more respect. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, this, remember what I was saying earlier, earlier when I listened to Donda, it's like I get that moment, that dopamine moment, I like mm -hmm. it, and then after a while it just wears off on me. The mm -hmm. reason why it wears all for me is because nobody came in and rapped. That's it. At least on CLB, when somebody's singing and all this other stuff, I'm going to get a verse. And I might actually get an actual rap verse from the person that. So which one are you album? saying is better? Kendrick. When he comes out. <laughs> I was gonna say, I guess Kendrick when he comes out, man. That's what I said, But between man. the two albums we talking about now, man. Ah, oh, man. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say CLB because I'm gonna listen to it more. Okay. I'm gonna listen to it more. I'm not. And to, and to tell you the truth, I really don't feel like it's better than Donna. I don't. I feel like they're too. Wait, that's what I'm versions. asking you. It's too. Which one do you feel is better as an album? Not which one you're going to listen to more, not which one has more of this or more of that. Like, which one is just a complete body of work? Don does a better... Which one do you... Complete like body album? of artistry and album. Donda is a better put together, complete artistry of album. Like, no matter if you didn't like the, the songs or not, they still kind of flowed into each other. Like, it was a... You know, the whole time. Or whatever. It, it, music, you know what I'm saying? I, I kind of feel like it is, but at the same time, it's like, mm. um, mm, coffee. Oof. I'm gonna say, <coughs> God damn, I'm gonna say CLB got it, and it's not close. I mean, it's not. It's not uh, a gap that's that wide. Uh -huh. Like they're very close. Um, mm -hmm. I think. I think what I took it to was production. Uh, overall, like the song composition in general, like so that's lyrics and everything included. Um, I took it to feature usage, and then like actual album so like when i look at albums usually they have like a set like the playlist is a set list almost so i'm thinking yeah. from like a dj perspective which one makes the most sense from a narrative standpoint which one makes the most sense to paint a picture by the end of the album so when i did that um i think from a narrative standpoint i had clb from a production uh, yeah. from a production standpoint <clears throat> and overall composition standpoint I had, um, oh, and lyricism. Um, I had uh -huh. um, Donda. For lyricism, though, I had CLB. 
And then That's it came and then it kind of came down to like feature usage. That was the deciding factor for me. Like they both had amazing features, but who used them better? And to me, <clears throat> Kanye had two songs where he I feel like he made the most out of his features. Whereas on CLB, every time a feature came in, they I fit. feel like that was the perfect placement for them. You maximized what they do to enhance your song. You <clears throat> didn't, like, they didn't get minimized because of how you used them. Yeah. I felt like on some of the songs, like with Roddy Rich, like, I feel like he could have done way more with that song had Kanye opened it up. But I feel like because Kanye's producing, he's telling them what he wants him to do, like that hamstrung some of his full potential that he I've seen him do on other songs. So I feel like because of that, Drake gets it. Um, I definitely feel what you're saying though, as far as like a every, I put it like this, Kanye got some songs on there that will be in my everyday rotation. Yeah. But I, I will probably <clears throat> listen to the whole album of CLB more than I will Donda. Like I'll pick and choose certain that's, pieces of that's Donda how to pick. But I can't, I probably will not listen to that album again as a whole album. Probably ever. CLB, I could see me sitting down and just playing that job from the start all the way through and just letting it rock for a minute. You know what I mean? So I think mm -hmm. that's the, the deciding factor for me too. But um, Donda is see? definitely, like I can see though, this is the weird thing about Donda. Donda has its effect on me because of every time I've listened to it, I've picked up on something different. I've heard yeah. something different in a verse that made me like a certain song a little more. I've heard a new sound. or So I feel like by the end of, like I would love to come back to this in like a month and see which one grew on me the most. Because I feel like uh -huh. in a month, Donda may be the one. Uh -huh. And I may not really care. I may be doing the picking and choosing from CLB by then. So I, I don't know, but See this. Yeah. This is this is what bring me. I know after a while I'm gonna get tired of CLB because everybody's on it right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get tired of hearing it all the time, or whatever. But right now is a better complete thought than Donda. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And I that's why. I, yeah. And I can't. That's why I can't really choose between the two because I feel like Donda. They're two different genres, genre of music within rap. It feel like like Donda sounds like a whole different thing than Drake. Like I don't understand. I can't really. I understand why. Dr Ye I know exactly to, what it is. Ye want to drop at the same time as as Drake because of the beef and everything, but I just feels like if you were if you were a devout Ye fan, if they dropped at the same time. You gonna be on your side. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why he's doing that, though, bro. <clears throat> it's the reason that they sound like that to you is because it's not necessarily because the compositions are that different as far as the genre. It's more of the audience they're targeting. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay is playing <clears throat> the concert game. He's thinking about what gives you a better experience. Yeah. In a concert format, because after these albums, what comes next? As the COVID, concert. as people say, "Fuck COVID," and go all back out on these clubs and these arenas, the concert. So now you're playing the, the long game of the beef of okay, yeah, we're gonna see who wins on the album game and all of that, but we're also gonna see who wins on this follow up, like who has the better show off of this, who is selling out more because of this, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like that's where Don Ye can shine because this album is tailored to a stadium. I see why his listening party, why he didn't do it like at a club or in a studio somewhere or something like why he yeah. did it in the stadium. Like when I listen to this, John, it's every song music. is like, this is stadium music. Like this is. This is, this is um, like the Super Bowl. Crowd, this crowd is funded energy. This is halftime at the Super I'm doing Bowl. this yes I'm doing this <clears throat> in the middle of like all of my people and we all riding the same vibe and we 
we're we're feeding off of each other. Like you remember back in the day when I used to say when we go to the club, you could tell it'll be good night because you would see yeah, it, it was the wave. Yeah, that wave. It's this yeah. everybody's it's this aura same. of every it's this aura of like-mindedness when everybody's <clears throat> consciousness is on the same page. And for that time, it's like complete nirvana where people are everybody is just mentally and emotionally and spiritually connected and that's what song. that's what donda will do in a stadium everybody's swag surfing at the same time yeah yes <laughs> yes yes so i can that's why i said like i could see this album over time becoming bigger because when you start to put visuals and the whole presentation around it Donda has more breadth. It's a bigger canvas to paint on, if that makes sense. Kanye always go for the long game, though, because for the simple fact that, like, the way he thinks, he's always thinking in the long game. Um, and then, like, if you think about it, all the songs, all the albums, like, my dark, my beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy, how whatever the fuck, how you say that shit. They consider that a classic, but they weren't really saying that at first, but now that everybody yeah. goes back to it and everybody live with it, you know what I'm saying? He's going for the long game, but Drake is definitely going for the radio hit right now, which... He's got it. He's got he a few. He is the all-time he's MVP got a few. champion of that shit. Yeah, he's definitely the the, the sales king, um, and he's got another one that's going to generate quite a few singles. He's got and some bangers why, on them. That's why I say I don't see why. Like, I see why he wants to drop at the same time as Drake, but it still would make any difference because the people that listen to Drake don't care about what you know. Kanye. Now I'm not gonna say that because they still have like there's still like a lot of people that listen to both of them, right? Pretty much, there's probably more people that listen to both of them than just you know yay fanatics over Dre fanatic because it's the same kind of vibe or whatever. But right, Donda is something totally different. It's definitely than... Don- Donda is an experience. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, CLB is a CLB is an album. Donda this is, is a, gonna. It's a thing. It's a presentation. It's a um. It's a. It's a Broadway play. Yeah. Music, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Indeed. So, big facts. At the end of the day, Kendrick has the best album between the Donda versus CLB beef. Even though I, nobody has heard it's anything okay. about it yet, but he just registered all his songs in, so we're gonna get it soon. And after a while, I say Kendrick because I know I can get the good balance of both Kanye and Drake at the same time with him. It's a message. I can get I can get some club, some not club, but like radio songs. And, and he's yeah. gonna talk cash shit to Drake too. He's gonna talk all kinds of cash shit. And I love it. I oh, love yeah. it. Shit talking to Kendrick is a beautiful thing too. I, I'm, I'm yeah, oh my god, it. yes. I'm all about oh my god. It. I feel um, elevated. I feel elevated every time I listen to him. Like I never heard anybody that talk shit, and I feel elevated when he talk shit. <laughs> yes, I am that, a kid. He give you that. He give you that. He give you that uplifting ass with verbal ass whooping. <laughs> I'm the alpha omega. He whoop your ass and then help you with your posture. Come on, baby. Pick your chest up. Pick your chin out. Don't walk with your head down. I'm like you know. After he don't kick your ass all around. But yeah, um, definitely looking forward to that so we can talk about that as well.